We discuss about the definition of the amblyopia. We will discuss about the onset, the etiology of amblyopia, uh, the different types of amblyopia, and uh, the treatment and management of different types uh, uh, of amblyopia. Like, hello, this is Khuram Nasir, and you're watching Optometry with Khuram. And finally, we have started the most awaiting video, the most awaiting playlist. Actually, we will record many videos on the specific topic, which is amblyopia. Finally, right? This is most interesting and most important in optometry, and the topic is the amblyopia right so first of all we will discuss about uh, the definition of the amblyopia uh, the amblyopia is also called the lazy eye right in the lay language we also called the lazy eye the amblyopia right so we will discuss uh, the learning outcomes actually of this lecture are we will discuss about the definition of the amblyopia we will discuss about the onset the etiology of amblyopia uh, the different types of amblyopia and uh, the treatment and management of different types uh, uh, of amblyopia like we will discuss about different types like uh, we will discuss that uh, what is an isometropic amblyopia what is uh, uh, ametropic amblyopia what is meridional amblyopia and so on right so first of all we will discuss that what is actually the definition of amblyopia right so first of all the amblyopia definition it is unilateral or rarely bilateral right so the amblyopia is mostly mostly 90 percent more than 90 percent cases that amblyopia is unilateral but it can be it could be the bilateral it could be in one eye and it could be in the both eyes as well right in different in certain conditions right so again uh, the amblyopia is unilateral or rarely bilateral without any structural abnormality and posterior visual pathway right so in amblyopia Keep it in mind that we do not have any structural abnormality. Our cornea is fine, right? Our uh, ciliary body uh, are, is fine. Our choroid is fine. Retina is fine. All the structures are fine. There is no any certain abnormality in the retina, right? So, again, the definition is unilateral. The amblyopia is unilateral or bilateral and without any structural abnormality and posterior visual pathway. So, what is posterior visual pathway? The posterior visual pathway is actually the pathway from which is starting from actually the retina to optic nerve then optic chiasma then optic tract then lateral geniculate body and then the visual cortex of the occipital lobe right you know very well that what is actually the visual visual pathway so in amblyopia the amblyopia could be unilateral or bilateral mostly unilateral and rarely bilateral right and the amblyopia is without any uh, structural abnormality and without any abnormality in the visual pathway right so this is the definition of the amblyopia right but uh, the clinical definition of amblyopia is there is two line two snellum line difference in the amblyopic patient what does it mean for example if my this eye is amblyopic and this eye is better right this is a perfect eye but this is amblyopic eye but the visual acuity in my um, amblyopic eye will be reduced as compared to my better eye it's an obvious thing right but what is what does it mean when i'm saying that there is a difference of two snellen line difference it means that if my better eye got visual acuity six by six but here in my amblyopic amblyo 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 eye the visual acuity will be six by 12 or six by 18 or more right so at least there must be two snellen line difference acuity in the amblyopic patient right so now we'll discuss about the onset of the amblyopia remember that amblyopia always starts from birth to seven years it can be start from uh, in infancy age from newly born to one year of age look or one year to two year or two to three years or three to four years or four to five or six and seven so the onset is from birth to seven years right and the next line is earlier the onset lethal will be the amblyopia so now we'll discuss about the frequency of the amblyopia right so frequency of amblyopia is uh, the amblyopia is most frequent in premature uh, right so what what does it mean when i'm saying the premature you know very well that the gestation period of a human is nine months right so we stay nine months in our mother's womb so if a child delivers before nine months like if we deliver at the age uh, of uh, the gestation period of eight months but less than nine months so that patient is more vulnerable to amblyopia right so another one is the amblyopia is more frequent in delayed milestone right uh, some children or some babies got delayed milestones right 
they got slow development, they, they got slow growth. So those patients with delayed uh, milestones, with delayed growth, with delayed development, they are most and more vulnerable to the amblyopia, right? And the mothers, uh, which is actually taking alcohol or smoking, uh, the baby will be uh, more vulnerable towards amblyopia. And now we'll discuss about the pathophysiology of amblyopia, right? What is actually the basic reasons behind that condition, which is called amblyopia, right? So pathophysiology uh, is actually the reasons. These are actually the reasons. Uh, we will discuss about the unilateral uh, causes or bilateral causes uh, uh, for developing amblyopia. Uh, and we will discuss about the involvement of retina uh, for creating or for developing amblyopia. So first of all, we will discuss certain reasons uh, behind the amblyopia and which are unilateral, right? Unilateral means in just one eye, right? So the first example uh, uh, of unilateral amblyopia, which caused unilateral amblyopia is strabismic amblyopia, the strabismus, right? So what, what is strabismus? Strabismus is actually the squint, the deviation in the eyes, right? So strabismic amblyopia and how does it uh, develop uh, if your one eye is disaligned, right? your both eyes are aligned this is called the primary position right if your one of the eye right or left is deviated right so that uh, deviation can cause uh, amblyopia how you know you know very well that our central nervous system is strongly aligned is strongly connected with the eyeball with both of the eyeballs right for example if one eye is deviated it means that the phobia is deviated the retina is deviated actually the macula is deviated right so one eye for example, if one eye is deviated, so there will be a weak connection between that eye, right, with the brain, with the central nervous system. So the eye, so the brain will be more concerned with the central eye, the eye which is centered, right? So that's why that eye, the amblyopic eye or the strabismic, the squinted eye, the deviated eye will lose his connection, will lose her connection from the central nervous system, right? So that eye, the aligned eye, the centered eye will get more concern from the brain. So slowly and progressively, the deviated eye will lose its connection with the brain. So that can cause the strabismic amblyopia and that is unilateral, right? So the next is anisometropic. So anisometropic is, you know very well that what is actually the anisometropia. Our last playlist was about the anisometropia, right? So anisometropia is that I got uh, higher prescription in one eye and lesser prescription in the fellow eye. This is called the difference in refraction in the both eyes called an isometropia, right? So if my one eye is, um, if, if my one eye got high refractive error and one eye got less refractive error, this is an isometropia. So the eye which got high refractive error can lose its connection with the brain, can lose its connection with the central nervous system, right? So that can cause the an isometropic amblyopia. Right? So this is the second unilateral reason uh, for developing amblyopia. And the next one is, third one is stimulus deprivation. Uh, stimulus deprivation means, uh, you know very well that the light is actually the most uh, important stimulus to see anything. If I got light here, then I can see here. I have lights in my studio, that's, that's why you can see uh, my face that's why you can see this whiteboard that's that's why you can see these writings over here but if there is no any light we can't see anything so light is actually the stimulus uh, for that stimulus we can see each other right we can see the world so stimulus deprivation how it can cause for example if my retina is not getting the light stimulus right if if i got unilateral ptosis if there is a drooping of my eyelid in one eye so i i would not be able uh, to see the uh, to, to get uh, the stimulus which is light my retina will be deprived my retina will not get the stimulus which is light and when the retina will get least stimulus of light that will uh, develop amblyopia so this is called the stimulus deprivation so the reason behind uh, it could be the process the unilateral process could be the reason behind stimulus deprivation and what is actually the stimulus light is actually the stimulus uh, uh, and uh, with, the, with the help of the light we can see each other we can see the whole world we can see the beautiful things around right so if there is no any light if there is no 
uh, light stimulus, we will be unable to see anything in the world, right? So this is called the stimulus deprivation, right? So now, now we will discuss about the certain reasons, uh, the certain causes which are uh, bilateral causes of amblyopia. And what are those uh, reasons? The first is called the bilateral cataract. You know very well that what is cataract? The Safed Motia is called cataract. So cataract is uh, the opacification of the crystalline lens, right? If my both eyes got uh, cataract, if my both lenses got opacifications, that is called cataract, right? So if there is opacification of the lens, if there is cataract in my both eyes, so light will be light will not hit my retina. And if there is not any light on the retina, I will not be able to see uh, the things, the objects very clearly. So there will be a deficiency of stimulus of light on the retina. So it can cause slowly and progressively, it can cause amblyopia because my retina is not getting enough light to see the things, right? So it can cause the bilateral, uh, it can cause amblyopia. And the next one is called the bilateral ametropia. What is ametropia? Ametropia are refractive errors, right? Which refractive error? This could be myopia, it could be um, hypermetropia, it could be astigmatism. These are refractive errors. This is called, so these three refractive errors are called ametropia. So ametro if the ametropia or the refractive errors are bilateral, if I got minus 10 refractive error here and minus 10 refractive error here, so they, this is a high refractive, high myopia, right? If I got plus 10 here, plus 10 here, if I got minus five cylinder here, minus five cylinder here, so these are high refractive errors, right? So these high refractive errors, these high uh, ametropic conditions can cause amblyopia, the bilateral amblyopia, right? So next one is the light deprivation. We have already discussed about the light deprivation. Light deprivation is actually, uh, the light is not hitting the retina properly, right? So it can cause amblyopia as well. If my both eyes, if I got bilateral doses, right? It can cause light deprivation amblyopia as well. Uh, and the next one is a complete cataract. If there is a complete uh, hypermature cataract in both eyes, it can also call the bilateral amblyopia. It can also lead uh, the patient towards amblyopia in the certain age from zero to seven years, right? And now we will discuss that uh, the involvement of retina for causing, uh, for developing amblyopia. So what is the role of retina uh, causing the amblyopia? So first is the reduced input of rods and cones. You know very well we have 10 layers of retina, right? We have the retina pigmented epithelium, we have layers of rods and cones, we have um, outer nuclear, we have outer plexiform, outer limiting membrane and so on. We have 10 layers, uh, retinal nerve fiber layer, we have 10 layers of retina, right? We have, I have a detailed video on layers uh, of the retina. So if there is a reduced input of rods and cones, you know very well that uh, the first layer uh, of the retina which get the light right which receive the light which welcome the light uh, from the outside is layers of rods and cones right so the excessive light will go towards the retinal pigmented epithelium and the and the optimum light will get by uh, the rods and cones so the photoreceptors are the things the photoreceptors are the receptor which lead that light towards uh, the central nervous system right the rods and cones will transmit this light towards the central nervous system right this light will convert into the chemical the chemical will convert into the current the action potential and that action potential will transmit towards the central nervous system towards the um, you can say the occipital lobe in the visual cortex right so actually uh, the receptors which are involved uh, in transmitting the action potential towards uh, the central nervous system are the rods and cones so if there is any deficiency if there is any abnormality if there is a reduced input in rods and cones so this is uh, this could be the this could be one of the reasons for developing amblyopia right so the next is poor transmission from fovea to central nervous system so you know very well that uh, we have the whole retina the 10 layers of retina and the whole retina got a central point which got the most um, important which is called the m which is called the macula actually and mac what is macula macula is actually the central part of the retina right uh, and at the level of macula, at the macular region, we got millions of cones. So that's why the visual acuity on the macula is sharpest, right? So if we got a weaker macula, if the macula is not working properly, right? So what is actually the work? What is actually the function of the macula? 
as I told you that the macula got the fovea got uh, the maximum visual acuity. Why? Because it has uh, millions of cones, right? So if there is a deficiency of cones at the level of macula, so if there is any any certain abnormality at the level of macula, macula or fovea is unable to transmit that action potential towards the central nervous system that can also cause the amblyopia. So I hope you you got all the certain reasons, all the certain causes. Uh, for developing amblyopia. We have discussed about the unilateral causes which are strabismic and isometropic and stimulus deprivation and we have also discussed about the bilateral reasons, bilateral causes, uh, bilateral cataract, bilateral ametropia, bilateral refractive errors, myopia, hypermetropia or astigmatism. We have discussed about the light deprivation, we have discussed about the complete cataract and we have discussed the involvement of the retina, the involvement of the macula, the involvement of the uh, photoreceptor cells like rods and cones. And now finally we will discuss about the different types of the amblyopia.